Today I'm going to be painting some flamingos using negative space painting with a palette knife. The first thing I need to do is put down some background color, which will actually be the color of the flamingos. And I'm using this really hot paint, obviously, to, to establish that color field. I like to paint multiple paintings at the same time. I'm going to paint most of this with a palette knife, pretty much the whole thing. And this is where I start painting the negative space around where the flamingos will be. And I think that, you know, I picked up this technique years ago. I've seen Bob Burge also do it for trees and figures and, and other things, for, you know, flowers, whatnot. I'm sure other artists do it as well. I think that the combination of negative space painting as well as using a palette knife both work in conjunction to help keep the paintings really loose and really free. So as you can see, I'm, I'm using a brush here some too, but like I said, it's not, I'd probably 90% using palette knife. The things I'm thinking about at this point are repetition, uh, like the repeating patterns of the birds. Um, color obviously is going to be pretty simple, just the teal and the pink for the most part, a little bit of black and white. Um, and these paintings come together pretty quickly, just like my last video if you saw that. You don't have to go very far before, once you start adding you know, the black especially, the details really come together and it starts to you know, look like birds or flamingos. You know, and here you can see that I put a third flamingo in this one painting and I had him sort of pointing in the other direction. You know, that's another thing I like to always mention. You got to be willing to try things and, and uh, be flexible and change. That bird ends up becoming a wing later on or just a shape. It could still be a bird, I don't know. Uh, but I thought it was a little too, it felt forced to have three birds, one of them kind of stuck between the other two. So I wanted to uh, make sure and add that I'm painting on Strathmore paper taped to a wall and using acrylic paint. For me, having the paintings on the wall um, somehow adds more energy to it from an abstract painting perspective. I feel like I have more room to move around and just be free and I don't get as, as tight. And I think that also using acrylic paint plays a role in that as well because it dries really fast and so you have to move pretty quickly. So I think one of the keys to this type of painting is you're not trying to make things obviously look perfect or realistic. Uh, you know, the viewer's eye will do most of the work. You just have to sort of suggest what's there uh, in the form. I also left this part in here where uh, I smeared the black and made a big mess. And, you know, again, it doesn't matter with this type of painting because it's kind of messy anyway. Uh, but I think it reinforces the point that you just really have to be kind of free with this stuff and let mistakes happen and just continue to work uh, the piece until it looks, you know, good to you. That's another benefit of working on multiple paintings at the same time. You can move back and forth between them and not really get, like I said, stuck on one area and just let a painting be for a little bit and go work on something different and then reflect on what's working in one and try to apply that to the other. So just like in my last video, I had intended to cover these up and distort and distress them. And I know a lot of people are like, it was fine, <laughs> what are you doing? And you know, you're right, there's, I could have stopped, right? There's many stages in this type of painting where you could just stop and call it finished. And at this point in my approach and process, I really do try to overwork. I like to overwork things. I feel like they do still only get better for me um, the more I work on them. And so here you can see that I've, I've kind of distressed the original painting and then worked back into it, adding in more color and more variation, in, uh, especially in the pink. And I really feel like I got more depth and, and it got more interesting. So same process for this one, doing a little bit of negative shape painting that I'm going to paint over the flamingos with this teal color, wipe back into it with a paper towel, scratch into it with a palette knife, um, uh, and then just repaint the flamingos. And I think that what's interesting is at this point I've painted each of these paintings twice essentially. And I think that the second time around my marks and 
my brush strokes are just much more uh, expressive and free. And like I've mentioned many times, uh, I like to experiment. So I think another benefit of doing two or more paintings at the same time is that you can take chances with one of them here. I mixed in a little bit of the pink with the teal for the background and just sort of toned the whole thing. Just a personal preference, not sure if it works or not, but wanted to try something different. So here's where we ended up. If you like this kind of stuff, if you've watched my videos before, please uh, subscribe. It really does help to support the channel. Let me know uh, what kind of things you like. I have a lot of plans this year for different paintings that I'm going to be working on. Uh, but I'm more than willing to create whatever, you know, you guys are interested in if, uh, if I can. Uh, so yeah, let me know and, uh, thanks again.